for the fourth video in this how to play series for Prime Minister from GMT Games. In this video, we're going to be focusing on politics inside of a game of Prime Minister. Specifically, we're going to be talking about player action turns where you use your politician and your role to influence what's going on in the game. We're going to be talking about the politician's cards themselves and the player mats. We're going to be talking about standing. And finally, we're going to talk, be talking about challenges. Let's start with player action turns. And as we mentioned previously, uh, player action turns is when players take actions. And this is where it falls in the sequence of play or the parliamentary order, as it's called in this game. It comes right after bill selection, which we've discussed in a previous video. And the order in which the players take actions, as shown here, is first the government backbencher, then the opposition, and the opposition leader decides the order that they go. They decide whether the backbencher goes first or whether they will go first. And then finally, the prime minister goes. And during your action turn, you are going to spend the action cubes on your player mat every time you take an action. So you will spend a cube and then you will take one of the actions. And we'll talk about what the actions are later, although we've covered several of them uh, by this point already. And when you are out of cubes, then you are out of actions. During your player action round, you can also play supporter cards, and we'll talk about that more later, but supporter cards do not cost action cubes. They are sort of like a free action that you are allowed to take. The last thing I'll mention by way of introduction is that uh, when the prime minister is taking their player action round, the first thing they do is draw an event card and resolve that event card. And very often the event cards will require the prime minister to make a choice which might end up costing them some action cubes. So events in the game have the potential to drain the prime minister of action cubes, which they might prefer to use for other things. And here we see the five actions that uh, you can take. Uh, the first one and the second one we've covered. We've covered campaigning and we've covered debating in previous videos. We've also covered influence in a previous video. So flatter is an action you can take, as you can see here, to increase your favor with Queen Victoria. The level two effect, uh, you can either increase your favor with Queen Victoria, or you can actually decrease another player's favor with Queen Victoria. And hobnob is a player action, that, a politician action that you can take to draw supporter cards. What effect each of these actions has depends on both your player mat, which is your role in the game, and your politician. So let's start with politicians. Every politician card lists four out of the five actions that we just covered. Um, all of them will have the debate and hobnob action, but your politician will be missing one of the other three. So they'll only have four actions that they are able to take. If you're missing an action, you can't perform that action directly, but you might be able to get it through a supporter card. In addition, you'll notice that every single politician has one of their actions uh, rated at level two. So, uh, for example, in this case, the influence action, in this case, the flatter action, and in this case, the campaign action. When you're a party leader, uh, you unlock level two effects, and this allows you to take an enhanced version of that action on your turn. As I mentioned, the actions you can take is the intersection of your politician card and your player mat. Uh, so if we look at the prime minister, the prime minister is able to take all five potential actions at either level one or level two. Now, Benjamin Disraeli does not have the influence action, so he actually can't take the influence action in this case. But as prime minister, you have the widest range of, of uh, actions available to you. The opposition leader can also take all five actions, although it's important to note that uh, they can only use the influence action if they have it at level two. And the backbenchers only start with the debate and the hobnob abilities. So those are the only two actions that they are able to take. 
Although backbenchers also have what are known as career cards. And you can think of career cards, which are shown down here, as extensions of the backbencher mat. As their career develops, they will activate these cards and they'll unlock new actions and new bonuses. So to activate any one of these cards, it requires that you have the, re the requirements which are shown on the back of the card. So to activate the chief whip card, you need to have greater than or equal to two favor with Queen Victoria and greater than or equal to three standing. To flatter, you simply need greater than or equal to one standing. And you activate them by turning them over and then placing them uh, up here on your player mat. So for example, if we had if we had reached the ability, if we had reached one standing, we could activate this Privy Counselor a car, career card and we would place it up there. And this would now give us the ability to take these actions during this backbencher's player turn. So a couple of quick notes about activating these cards. The first is that you activate it as soon as you meet the requirements, even if it's not your turn. The second is, is that you only evaluate the requirements to activate the career. If your standing or favor falls later, you don't need to deactivate that card. In addition, there's always one career card that you won't have on your politician card. The politician is missing that related ability. So you simply set that aside. So the Earl of Derby here, for example, he doesn't have the campaign action. So we would simply set the campaign chairman card aside because he's not capable of activating that. Read together, your politician card and your current player mat and career cards determine what actions you can take. Benjamin Disraeli, as Prime Minister, for example, can take the campaign action, the debate action, the flatter action, and the hobnob action at level two, but because he doesn't have the, the influence ability, he can't take the influence ability directly, though, he, as we mentioned, he can get that effect by using supporters. By contrast, if he was the government backbencher, he could take the debate or hobnob action at level one, even though his hobnob ability is two, he can only take that, uh, that at level one. And he can't use the campaign action or the flatter action until he unlocks either the campaign chairman or the privy counselor career card. During your turn, you spend a cube for each politician action you perform. You take a cube, place it up here, perform the action. You can take the same politician action more than once as long as you have enough cubes. You can take the actions in whatever combination you like. You can't save cubes for any future round. At the end of the round, they're lost. And then as we mentioned, on the prime minister's turn, they first draw and resolve an event after which they will take actions and play supporter cards. But the PM may also end up spending cubes on events. As an example of events, if the PM drew revolution in France, they could either ignore it completely and lose standing, uh, or sorry, lose uh, popular support amongst the gentry. They could spend an action cube to denounce it, in which case they would only lose one popular support with the gentry, or they could spend two cubes arranging for asylum for an ex-monarch and increase their popular support with the gentry. A couple of other examples. Uh, Derby Day, you can either skip it or put on your best hat and bet five pounds, spending an action cube, depending on what you wanted to happen with the gentry. Or if there's a stalemate in the war with Russia, you could choose to ignore it at the cost of some standing, spend an action cube to lose some support by blaming the army, or spend two action cubes to negotiate a settlement, settlement avoiding any negative impacts, whatever. The Prime Minister has to choose what they want and how many cubes they are willing to spend when they are resolving an event. Each backbencher also has a debate card. This is distinct from the debate action on the map. This represents you staking your reputation on either the passage or failure of a particular bill. Now, the card has two sides. Uh, the first side is used when there's a pact in place. The other side is used when there isn't a pact in place, but since we haven't discussed packs yet, we'll discuss that in the next video, just tuck that information away for now. 
At the top of the card, you'll see thresholds for projected votes for the bill. So if the card is on this side, you can select any bill which is has greater than two, uh, greater than or equal to 290 projected votes. Then, depending on your standing, you will either spend one or two action cubes. If your standing is uh, two or less, you're gonna spend one cube. If it's three or more, you're gonna ha have to spend two cubes. And that represents the more standing you have, the more risk you're taking, or the more you have at risk by putting your reputation on the line. So when you play this debate card and spend this action cube, you slide this card underneath the bill that you're targeting. Uh, it's worth noting that both backbenchers can target the same bill. After the bill is resolved, you take back this card, so that means it's immediately available for play in the next turn, and you're either gonna receive the reward or the, the, the penalty um, depending on the card and the outcome. So in this case, uh, if the bill fails or is withdrawn, you can either gain one standing, one favor, or two victory points. If the card was on uh, this side, however, uh, if the bill passes, you can choose one standing or one favor, but if the bill fails or is withdrawn, then you would have to choose either negative one standing or negative one favor. I will note that there's also an opposition leader debate card, um, but you can check the rules for information on that. During your uh, player action turn, you can also play supporter cards. And as we mentioned, this doesn't cost an action cube to do, so these are like free actions that you can take. Now you can play supporters in the same round that you drew them, or you can hold up to four cards for future, for future use. And that hand limit is enforced at the end of your action turn. So it is possible during your action turn to have more than four cards, uh, more than four supporters available to you, as long as you only have four or you discard down to four at the end of your action turn. And most supporters, actions resemble politicians' actions, um, although they may allow you to do certain things that your politician can't normally do. We already talked about, for example, Benjamin Disraeli as prime minister doesn't have the influence action, but if he p played the C.P. Scott supporter card, he could either choose, uh, in essence, uh, to do a debate action and, and add or subtract 10 support for a bill under consideration, or he could use it to shift the balance between moderates and uh, partisans by 10 in parliament. You can see the Duke of Westminster uh, can either add one to your standing or you can choose to go up one uh, in uh, popular support with the conservatives. And the Duke of York allows you to choose which player or which party will lose support amongst the gentry or gain one favor with Queen Victoria. So while most of the supporter uh, effects mimic campaign actions, there are others that will allow you to do things like gain standing. And in each case, um, they're gonna offer you two options and you have to choose which option you want when you play that supporter. The timing of supporters is important. It's often better to hold them and play them at the right moment and the ability to save supporters for future use is uh, really a key thing that distinguishes them from politician actions. Finally, let's talk in more detail about standing and leadership challenges. Standing, which we've already noted is tracked at the, uh, the bottom of the player mat, and as, we, as we've already mentioned, uh, reflects your personal support uh, in Parliament Standing determines the outcome of leadership challenges. When a player has more standing than you, it is possible for them to take your mat and take your role in the game. Each type of player mat has a unique standing range. The PM has the highest range. Their range goes all the way up to 14. So if they keep their standing high enough, they can fend off any challenge. You can see the opposition leader, by contrast, only goes from a standing of four to a standing of 11, whereas the backbenchers go from a standing of zero to a standing of eight. Standing also affects your action cube income. 
Uh, the range, again, varies depending on your roll, but depending on where your standing is, you will get uh, you will get extra action cubes. So for example, if you're the opposition backbencher and you reach standing three, you will get, at the beginning of your turn, an extra action cube. So you would simply place that on your mat, and then during your uh, player action turn, you would then have the ability to take two actions. The opposition leader, as you can see, uh, has the potential for three action cubes, and the Prime Minister has the potential for four action cubes. And we've already seen uh, through the other videos a lot of the ways that you can gain or lose standing. So for all of the players in the game, uh, you can gain or lose standing through the play of supporter cards. Backbenchers uh, gain a standing point every single round. So this is shown on their player mat. Every single round, their standing is going to go up by one at the end of their action turn. The party leaders, the, the, the prime minister and the opposition leader, as we've seen, they gain or lose standing through bill withdrawals or failures. And as the PM, uh, bill effects and events can also affect your standing. So with that discussion of standing out of the way, let's talk about where it really comes into play, which is the ultimate in bare knuckle politics, leadership challenges. And these occur after the prime minister resolves a bill. After the prime minister resolves a bill, you will hear challenges. So the order, the government backbencher can challenge the prime minister, the opposition backbencher can then challenge the opposition leader, and the opposition leader uh, can challenge the prime minister. To successfully challenge, you have to have more standing than the player you're targeting. If standing is tied, favors the tiebreaker. If standing and favor are tied, the challenger wins. So anytime you have the same standing and the same favor as another player that you can potentially challenge, that challenge will succeed. Having talked about when it's uh, possible to challenge and what it takes uh, to have a successful challenge, let's talk about what happens after a successful challenge. And if you remember back to the previous video where we were talking about a government changeover uh, after an election, it's not dissimilar from that. It differs in a couple of critical ways, partly because after an election, there will never be any bills on the board. Elections are triggered by not having bills on the board. Challenges, when challenges occur, there might be bills on the board. So part of what happens uh, in the process of changeover when there's a challenge is you have to look at what happens to the bills on the board. So let's go into it now. Now, the first thing to know is that you're going to exchange mats. So that's obvious. Uh, the, you know, if the opposition or if the, sorry, if the government backbencher challenges the prime minister, then they would swap mats. The, the government backbencher would then be using the prime minister mat and the prime minister would be using the government backbencher mat because they'd be changing roles. The winner of the challenge gets either the starting standing level on their new player mat or the standing on their previous mat, whichever is greater. So if we, uh, if the prime minister was challenged, let's just take an example here. If the prime minister was, was had a standing of six and was challenged by a government backbencher with a standing of seven, when the government backbencher took over uh, the prime minister's uh, mat, they would set their standing to 11, which is the starting standing for the prime minister. If by contrast, the opposition backbencher was challenging the opposition leader and the op they had the same you know, standing of seven, standing of six, when the opposition backbencher took over the opposition leader's mat, they would set their standing to seven because that's greater than five, which is the starting standing for the opposition leader. The loser of the challenge, by contrast, always gets the starting standing on their new player mat. So if you, regardless of what your standing was, if you are relegated to being a backbencher, your starting standing is going to be reset to zero and you're going to have to start to rebuild your career and your standing from that point. Also worth noting, in, a, in any time a challenge, a successful challenge occurs, both players keep any of their unplayed supporters and they keep their favor with Queen Victoria. Now let's look at what happens if the opposition leader successfully challenges the PM. 
uh, the things other than uh, the, the changes to standing and player mats that I talked about. The first thing that happens, as happens with a government changeover, is that the opposition leader is going to get six victory points for uh, replacing the PM. You remove all bills and you remove the election marker. So anytime there is a successful challenge of this type, you will be holding an election immediately afterwards on the next uh, game round. And that determines the new government's uh, members of parliament uh, and the mix of moderates and partisans for them. In addition, because the government is changing over, the backbenchers exchange mats and career cards, similar to what happens after an election in which there's a party changeover. If the government backbencher successfully challenges the PM, in addition to exchanging mats and, and resetting standing, that player gains six victory points for replacing the prime minister. Any bills that are on the board are removed, but the election marker does not get removed. So while it's going to trigger an election phase, in this case, you have the option of postponing the election by removing the election marker. And that's one of the key differences between a changeover of prime minister between the opposition leader versus a government backbencher. To close this out, let's just a couple of final thoughts uh, about challenging. First of all, challenging is a choice. It's not automatic. If you're eligible to challenge, you decide whether or not you want to exercise that challenge. And it's not always a good idea to challenge. If you're a backbencher, you have to consider how this is going to affect your party. It might help you personally, but it's usually a setback for your party. So you have to look at what it's going to do to your party in addition to what it's going to do for you personally. If you're the opposition leader, you're going to want to take a close look at what's likely to happen in the election that's going to be triggered by your successful challenge. How many seats are you likely to win in that election? Are you going to be in control of the government or are you going to be the prime minister of a minority government? What is the mix between partisans and moderates going to look like if you are uh, in control of government? Is the time right for a challenge right now, or is it better to wait? And with that, you should now have a very good basis for understanding the politics inside of a game of Prime Minister. I really appreciate uh, your time watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed the video, you can uh, su uh, subscribe, you can like, comment, share, all of those uh, good things. And we'll be back with one more how to play video, which is gonna go deep into a lot of the rules that are specific to the multiplayer game.